I am going to talk about a method um, to show you or demonstrate um, operation strategies and the right metrics for the right operation strategies for airline industries using actual data and a method developed by Professor Turvish, Christian Turvish from uh, Wharton School, an amazing person and uh, he has a very good book on operations management which I believe is probably one of the better books in our area. So if you get a chance, uh, pick it up and have a look. But let's get to what we're trying to do. So the two dominant uh, strategies in the airline industry. So one strategy is what we would call as the low cost airline strategy. And the other is what we would call as the full service airline strategy. Now both these airlines have completely um, different objectives because the low cost airline is focused on cost reduction or minimizing cost. And the full service is focused on revenue maximization. Now in spite of these objectives, given these objectives, let's suppose I have two airlines, right? I have a low cost airline one and I have a low cost airline two. And let's say low cost airline one has a cost one and low cost airline two has a total cost of two. Can we say that the airline with the lesser cost is the better low cost airline? Well, if you were to design good metrics, we should not because it all depends on how much outcome did you produce from that cost. So a good measure of a low cost airline is just the cost, but how much outcome did you pr uh, promote from uh, or create from that cost? So a good measure would be cost divided by outcome or cost divided by outcome. So whichever of these two would have lesser cost per outcome is a better airline, right? Or if I reverse these metrics and write it to outcome divided by cost, And this I can call as efficiency. I can now say that whichever airline has higher efficiency because I've reversed or inversed the um, um, uh, fraction, whichever airline has a higher efficiency is a better low cost airline. Um, for the full service airline, we do something similar. Let's say I have full service airline one, full service airline two. Um, they have revenue R1, R2, obviously based on revenue, we should not judge the airlines. A good metric would be um, for that revenue, how much did you get, how many customers did you serve or how many customers did you use to get that revenue? So good metric that we would have is revenue for the number of customers. Right? And this we call as yield. So we measure uh, uh, um, a full service airline with a better yield, getting more revenue from the same number of customers is a better full service airline. Now in airline industries, the outcome is given by something what we call as available seat miles. That's the total miles that are available. So if an airline flies, one particular aircraft flies, for example, 1000 miles, and it has 250 seats in the airline, then the available seat miles become 250 and four zeros, so 250,000 available seat miles. And same thing, the, the customer side, we call it revenue seat miles, RSM or revenue seat mile. Same thing, let's suppose the distance is 1,000 miles, and the number of sold seats, because that's the number of customers now, is let's say 200, it's 1000 miles, 200 customers. In that case, my revenue seat mile would be two and five zeros, 200,000 is the um, revenue seat mile. So I, I use this data, I use um, the Bureau of Transportation Statistics page. Um, which has a ton of information. So this is information. I have American Airlines. I have their uh, revenue passenger mile, available seat mile. I can change the airline and get whatever. And I'm going to choose the year 2017, which is a normal year. 
um, I can go to another page where on this schedule P1, I find the profit, lost, expenses, etc. for all the airlines. Um, and I use that and um, get it into this table that I have. So I took dominant airlines in 2017 and um, made this table up of available seat mile, revenue passenger mile, operating revenue and operating expense. Now based on this information, I calculate my operations efficiency and yield. These are the two things we talked about previously. Available seat mile upon cost. The cost is operating expense and yield is operating revenue upon revenue passenger mile, which is the number of customers that we talked about. So let's try to map it and see why these metrics make sense. I'm going to hide these numbers so that I can map it correctly. Oops, control Z. hide them and I'm creating a scatter chart insert a very simple scatter chart and just to make it clear uh, format axis I'm going to start at four so I get more space I can use more of the chart and this I'm going to start at 0.09 and then I'm going to give you labels. Yeah, I don't want these labels. I want the names. So I, I modify data labels and say the data labels should have values from cell and they should have these values. Enter and I don't want the Y axis value so that it becomes better. And I'm going to drag the graph out so that we get a better view of um, this information. Now, what if you see here, what we see very clearly that the Delta American and United, which are full service airlines, are more about these numbers, which are yield. They're more about high yield. They're very high yield, but they have very low efficiency numbers, right? And Spirit and Frontier, which are low cost airlines, have very high efficiencies like they should, but have very poor yields. And uh, if I use a line to create an efficiency frontier or efficiency boundary, I can see that this line represents the efficiency frontier. So as airlines, should I try to increase my yield as well as my um, efficiency? Oh, hell no. If I'm, if I'm Delta, I should be comfortable with having um, efficiency lower than Spirit and Frontier because that's not, my, my, that's not the main metric that is important to me. My strategy is to be a full service airline and for full service airline, I have to have a yield um, uh, which is maximized and an efficiency which, not, which need not be maximized. So my focus should be on yield. So this is the idea that about operation strategies or supply chain strategies that, well, we have to decide the strategy like we talked about in the previous videos. Do I want to have, a, do I have an innovative product or a functional product and do I have a efficient supply chain or a reactive supply chain? And once I decide my strategy, my metrics also get fixed that I need to focus on certain selective metrics only for my strategies. And uh, that's the way I can be successful as an operator.